Everybody welcome and thank you for taking some time to be at our final presentations for ICT 405605 Capstone Experience, which is our ongoing engagement with UW Stout and their Salesforce implementation. Uh, looking at the list of people that are in the room at this point uh, in relationship to those who are invited, I think what I'm going to do again to the point I made earlier about people showing up exactly on time for meetings and still at sometimes being a little bit late, I'm just gonna just gonna hold off. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a five minute grace period. Then I'll go ahead and I will launch this endeavor. So this is the last opportunity for those of you who are presenting to run down the hallway and take care of some needs and then come back. Hi, Beverly. We're just taking a five minutes, letting people get in the meeting kind of time. So. All right, I think we are going to begin again, everybody. I just like to say welcome to this uh, iteration of the ICT 405 605 capstone experience, a part of the ICT program and the DMT program and anybody who's in the enterprise technology minor. Uh, just a few words of introduction about this. We've been engage, engaged with um, UW Stout for the last two and a half years, approximately, as I can remember, um, in giving them some insights into uh, future iterations of implementing Salesforce to assist with the various 
um, things that a campus, a university like UW Stout needs to accomplish. And this is the fall 2020 version of this. Uh, tonight, you're going to get to see the results of our consulting groups. We have four of them total and their engagement with the university. Um, you'll get perspective as, as far as the problems that are being uh, addressed in the solutions and also an actual technical demonstration as well. Uh, these prototypes are meant as ideas for future implementation um, so the campus can continue to do its business in this season of change. So just a little bit of setup on the front end. I'm going to be kicking this to our student leadership team, our program managers, in just a little bit. But just to give you a little bit of insight in how these will go, the, the presentations uh, by these consulting groups will be preceded by me giving a cue related to evaluation because they are being looked at. Final grading is being uh, considered in part by what happens tonight. For those of you who are a part of this meeting who would like to participate in the evaluation, you'll get a Qualtrics link, which if you open prior to the group starting, it's pretty easy. We're not asking you to write a novel and some of the, the uh, instrument items are pretty simplistic. If you would give your perspective from what you hear and see, that would be appreciated. Also, there is going to be a point where we'll have open questions uh, from our client uh, and also from those people that are, that are curious and uh, wondering about the solutions and how they may work. So without further ado, I'm going to stop talking. Next time you'll hear me and the rest of the way, we'll be prompting you for those evaluation forms that I'll share through the chat. And I'll also say thank you in the end as well, because I do appreciate your time. All right, PMs, I'm passing it off. There you go. Thank you, Evan. I appreciate that. Um, just an introduction to myself and the other PMs. My name is Andre Bircher. I've been a program manager twice now. This is actually my second time. Um, we work directly with the groups to help them uh, communicate with the client, work on their problem solution for their final presentations that they're about to give. And we've been doing that throughout the entire semester. Um, a little bit about me at this university. I'm graduating actually in a week or two here um, with a major in ICT. And I'm excited for that, but I'm also more excited to see these presentations tonight. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to actually hand it off to another PM of ours, Noah. Go for it, Noah. Hi, I'm Noah Lindis. This is my first time being a PM. Um, I, uh, I just want to say this has been a really fun experience being on this side, and I'm really excited to see uh, what these consulting groups have come up with. It's been really fun working with them, and I hope they've had a great experience as well. Uh, I'll also be graduating, but that'll be next spring, not this fall, so I'll be a PM again next uh, semester, and I'm just excited to see the presentations tonight. I'll hand it over to Ashley now. Hello, I'm Ashley Walden. I am a PM for this semester. Uh, Noah and I were in a group last semester, so we were on the other side, so we've all been where you are. Um, it was really exciting being uh, able to support the teams this semester, and um, I'm really excited to be able to see the final products. Um, I will be graduating this semester. I am a graduate student in the ICT program. And I think awesome. we want, oh, go ahead, Noah, or Andre. Um, yeah, um, so just before, I'm going to actually hand it off to our client, James, to let him say a few things. But before that, um, I'd like to remind everyone during the presentations to turn off your cameras, uh, mute your mics, and then wait to add any questions or comments until the end of the presentations. Um, we want to give each group the respect um, to, to, to present without any interruptions. So that would be greatly appreciated. I'm actually going to hand it over to James. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is James Falkowski and I had the privilege of being the client for these great groups of students. Uh, I was representing enrollment and retention services and the expectations that I set for the consulting teams were to showcase some processes that would encourage student retention and to help make better data informed decisions as we plan for the future. I hope that you will find their presentations interesting as well as insightful. And I would like to also congratulate the graduating seniors. Best wishes for your future success and happiness. Great. Thank you, James. 
we'll uh, begin our presentations now. Before we do, I would just like to tell each consulting group um, that we're here and we're all excited. So uh, give it your best and may the odds be ever in your favor. First group up is going to be Lineys. Lineys, the digital floor is yours. And as Lineys is getting ready to go, if you'll check the chat client, you'll see a link that will feed the uh, internet gremlin and you'll get to the evaluation form. The evaluation form again is a Qualtrics survey. Um, all you have to do is open it, fill it out, submit it, and we'll have your uh, recorded responses on this. So uh, at this point then, Lineys, go ahead and set up and begin. All right. Good evening, everybody. We are Lineys Consulting, and we are going to talk a bit about course scheduling and how that affects Stout and how it all works here. Hey, guys. My name is Isaac Yang, and I am the technical SME. I'm Bailey Notch. I am our project manager. And I'm Taylor Steele, and I am the business analyst. The current course scheduling process at UW-Stout has left room to be desired by both students and the university. The primary issue left by the process is that the university can't see which courses students plan to take in the future. This has caused many of the problems surrounding course scheduling at UW-Stout. These problems include wasted resources, a strained hiring process for staff and faculty, issues meeting student course demand, and even student retention. The hiring process for professors is typically about eight to 10 months, making it difficult to fill these positions before a new semester. As a result, current professors may have to take on an additional course and subsequently become overloaded with work. When it comes to course scheduling, there are four major impacts. The first being how it affects Stout's budget. Overscheduling courses with low demand becomes inefficient and wasteful. Underscheduling causes budget inefficiencies where more sections needed to be added. The second is the allocation of resources. Classrooms, computers, laboratory, and cleaning equipment, as well as facility maintenance, are just a few of the resources demanded by courses. Because the university doesn't have knowledge of student plans for future semesters, the resources are not effectively allocated. The third is the retention rate of students. Offering too few courses will affect the retention rate of students, especially those that are newly enrolled. When a course is required for a student but is not available, it prolongs their stay at Stout. This could lead to students changing programs or even dropping out. The last impact is learning. Not having the proper faculty and staff may affect how students learn. If a professor is given an extra course at the last minute, they may become overwhelmed, which will affect the way they handle their course. Overloaded courses and teaching loads can impact both professors and students in negative ways, increasing stress for all parties and causing a decline in class and work quality. Moving on to our solution. It is an on-demand self-service four-year academic planner. The solution focuses on major specific courses, leaving out general education for the purpose of our demonstration. Our planner will also get student course preferences on semester, time, and modality to help meet student wants as well as demands without any guarantees to students as ultimately the decision is left up to department chairs. Our solution will pull student data and transfer it to reports for a better understanding of student plans. The reports are broken down by major course titles, modalities, semester preferences, and timing. In a full implementation, there would be more advanced reporting capabilities, but for a proof of concept, we wanted to utilize our limited time. Moving on to benefits. Benefits to our solution include increased student retention 
due to less courses being canceled or poor experiences with overworked staff, more accurate forecasts of student course demand, reserved budget and resources by utilizing courses, and improved resource allocation. Now, Isaac will start off the live demonstration with walking you through our Salesforce student interface. Thank you, Taylor. Now we can take a look at the demo. Um, I want to start off with mentioning the different records that are implemented in the system administrator's view. Um, the system administrator has access to all the records, but the reports that are specific to them are the major records, student records, and the course records. We made the student view very limited, so they only have access to objects that apply to them. Students will also only be able to see records that they themselves created. I'll show you what a student would see when they plan out their program, uh, which starts off with the program details object. The student is going to start off with creating a new record for themselves, and to do this, they can click on new record. And when this window pops open, the student could go in and start off with entering in their major. Due to time constraints, we weren't able to change uh, the data type of this field, but in a full implementation, we would be able to change this field type to something like a lookup field, so errors can be avoided from end users. And once the student finishes entering in their major, they would then be able to put in their start date. And then click save record. After they finish their plan, they can go back in and change their end date to whenever they finish their program. Once we enter in this data, the program plan will populate records of the courses needed for the program that they're enrolled in. Courses will then populate from the course catalog, but the student will then be able to go in and change their semester modality and their time. We wanted to default this field to be no preference, giving them the option to leave it up to the program administrators. The semester is broken up into a couple of years ahead so students can plan for their future. The modality is broken up in in-person, online, and hybrid. And the following field is the time. We have it broken up by morning, afternoon, and evening. This will allow students to be more specific in what times work best with them. Lastly, we have a completed checkbox that allows students to mark each course completed or not. This will also help the administration side know how many students still need to complete these courses. These are the only fields that students can modify because we want to limit any confusion in the case that a student accidentally changes a course name or a course number. That's all for the student interface and we'll now move to what happens after all of that data is inputted. Bailey will now be showing the administrator's point of view for reporting. Thank you, Isaac. So one thing I wanted to point out while we were doing this was our biggest challenge with the data. Um, that came in the form of the amount of data we were allowed to put in. Um, we had a very strict limit with Salesforce and we did accidentally hit it in the beginning there, um, but we were able to get past it and figure it out. Um, this report that is showing right now um, shows nine specific classes that we chose to fill in a lot of data for. Had we tried to fill in data for all the classes we have in each program plan, we would have only been able to put a few records in each and it wouldn't have been able to show trends as well. Um, this um, report itself is showing different semesters and the amount of students that chose those as a preference. Um, as you can see, there's bar bars with varying lengths um, and the shorter ones are fewer students in them and the larger ones obviously have more students that preferred that specific semester. Moving on to our second report, it gets into a little bit more detail about a specific course. We wanted to show you a view of how a potential trend could look and how it looks for each of those specific courses. So as you can see in this course, there is a higher preference for classes in fall semesters. We wanted to really showcase 
um, what students were looking for in what semesters, because if there's a huge want for fall semesters, that's a better option to have more sections in fall semesters if possible and less in spring. This allows students to better gauge kind of when they can take these classes and it lessens the worry about having to add um, sections last minute or to cancel quite a few. I know that can be a huge frustration for students and as students of this class, we've all felt it at some point at our time here in U at UW-Stout. So we really wanted to be able to help future students with that. Our third report is about the modality. Isaac mentioned that we have three modalities, which are in-person, online, and hybrid. We also chose a new preference one if students did not mind which one they were ended up in. Um, we put this one in there specifically to see if there was any specific classes that students would rather have in person, um, because that can be a huge difference maker for students on either when they take the class or if they even stay at Stout. Um, and it could potentially be a change major for them if they can't get the classes at a desired time or desired modality. As you can see, we chose to show some trends in here as well um, by varying up a lot of the data. This top class here has very few people who would prefer it in person. Um, that's a very um, online centric class to begin. And so that obviously will have more students with the preference of seeing it in the um, online or hybrid sections. Our last report is um, by time. So we chose to break it into morning, evening, and afternoon because we didn't want to get too specific on the time blocks that a course could be in um, because Stout has so many different types of courses that can last you know, from anywhere from 45 minutes to three hours for a lab course. Um, time for people can be very, very, um, a very big factor for how they schedule their courses because they might already have work plans or understand where their time needs to lie for courses. So we chose to add this one in and it can break down by specific class as well. That is all the reports we have and we thank you guys for listening and hope you learned a lot. And on behalf of Lineys, we just wanna say thank you to our executive team, the PMs, our client James and everyone here tonight. And we would love to answer any questions you guys have right now. The client always has questions. So uh, from what you've put together here in a full deployment, what additional things do you think would be useful to add? We would definitely add more things to um, prevent end users from making too many errors, such as, um, as we mentioned before in the majors, we would make it like a lookup field instead of um, having them type it out manually. Uh, to prevent them from accidentally typing the wrong thing and then data not showing up, as well as making multiple pick lists for the semester's time and modality to allow the administration side to know that students um, want more than one uh, choice. Thank you. Hi guys, great job. Uh, this would be a really, really cool solution, not only from a student side, but also from a program director side to schedule this. Um, some of the questions that I had um, related more to the um, the reports themselves. Actually, I guess it relates to the students as well. Um, did you factor in when they're picking their classes, whether or not there was the prerequisites that were needed? So like 305 um, in the ICT major is needed for 355 and 401. Did, is that factored into this as well? We did not end up factoring those in. That was something we were hoping we'd have time to do. Um, that is definitely something that would be required for a full implementation. Our goal was to figure out um, how this data actually would look in the reports before adding in the intricacies like prerequisites. Thank you. I'm going to jump in just quickly. Uh, one other thing that we had several conversations about is if this is a four year plan, we can't really uh, restrict based on prerequisites because they haven't taken the classes yet. So this again would be uh, giving their 
preferences for what they would like to do in the future, and then they would need to keep track of the completed or not. Um, one of the other things that they suggested from the team is that uh, students should be doing this on a periodic cycle. So that was something that answered my concerns about the prereqs. Um, and again, I think the longer that we can plan out, uh, the better for the university. Absolutely. I have one additional question. Uh, Bailey, I think um, you had mentioned um, the data issue that you guys ran into with the Salesforce on the amount of data that would need to be put in. Is that a developer edition? Like, a, you know, I know you are using a developer edition that just helps you kind of um, show show this um, prototype that you're building. But would, would that be an issue then when we got to implementation, if we actually implement data in Salesforce? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. Um, the issues we had were definitely because we were in a developer edition. Um, I think it was like five gigabytes or some specific number that we had hit and had used up actually over 100% of that data storage. Um, we looked into briefly as far as how that would look um, post, you know, proof of concept here. And we didn't find any issues that were glaring as far as where the data would go in, um, but that is definitely something that would have to be looked into even more if a full implementation was on, on the table. Okay. And, and then I see a question and I'm just gonna read it. This is uh, Joshua Lind. Uh, would every student need a Salesforce license to use the tool? That's a great question. So. We actually have this as a proof of concept. So right now, this is just showing what we can do as administrators for Salesforce, even just using the developer side, um, making something simple yet very effective. Um, in a full implementation, we would be able to make a, use a separate website and build um, basically taking this data from Salesforce, um, such as the fields like course, and the semester modality and time, and being able to export that onto a different website that we can use and just have, just use Salesforce as a data storage um, object to see, to create reports and see what other things uh, the administrators want to see from the students. All right, if there are uh, no further questions, we'll just keep on rolling then. Uh, thank you, Linies. That was a great presentation. And you, well, I see Evan popping up. We'll see if he has one, but. And he's muted. You're muted. Rookie, muted. you're on mute. And I'm muted. professional. <laughs> my, my apologies, Linies, for making your presentation look poor. No, I'm just, just jumping in for transition what I'm here for. <laughs> Anyways, back to the transition. Thank you, Lainey. It's a great presentation. We'll keep on rolling. Next up is RKG. So RKG, the floor is yours. And as a point of transition for assessment tools, go ahead and make sure you push the buttons to submit Lainey's um, evaluation. And I will now put in the chat for RKG, their assessment tool, and then I will get off, off the screen. So be watching for that, it's coming right now. All right, so we're gonna get started. Um, well, hello everyone, and thank you for joining us. We are RKG Consulting, and we're gonna be talking to you about our executive reporting solution. Oh, I don't know, something's wrong over there, getting a lot of beeps. Um, hopefully you can hear me okay. Uh, all right, sorry, continuing on. So we're gonna talk to you about our executive reporting solution. Um, before we begin, I'm gonna quickly introduce the team. We have A.L. Karsh, who is our business analyst, Matt Jen Forty, who is our technical SME, and my name is Kamala Russell, and I'm the project manager. So next slide, please. To get started, the problem that UW Stat is facing in relation to executive reporting is that program directors, department chairs, and college deans do not have ready access to how enrollment numbers of the programs within their college are changing over time. This both in absolute terms and relative to each other. 
But why is this a problem? So if we go to the next slide, this is a problem because without this information, college administration is unable to efficiently allocate resources to focus on the programs that need attention. For instance, we have that programs that let's say are experiencing low or declining enrollment are wasting resources. And therefore management needs to be able to quickly identify these programs to address the situation and either let's say provide assistance and attempt to increase enrollment or potentially even sunset these programs to free up cash for other uses. In the case of programs that are growing in enrollment year after year, management needs to have information available that allows them to budget more resources in advance to cover the expanding expense of these programs. Currently, STOUTS management does not have the information to quickly identify the programs that are either underperforming or that are growing. And this means that the resource allocation process ends up being longer and more complex than it needs to be, which in turn negatively affects the university's cash flow. From a big picture perspective, this is really about STOUTS management being able to make data informed decisions in order to get the most out of STOUTS limited staff and limited budget. A crucial part of this is management being able to identify the demand load for each program in a manner that is efficient to then be able to better allocate resources, anticipate program needs, and basically save money, which is obviously one of the most important things here. This is what STOUT is unable to do at the moment and really the problem that we want to solve for them. And I think it's also worth mentioning that this is particularly important right now because we all know that budgets have been severely affected because of COVID-19 and that declines in state budgets are going to force aggressive changes to the UW system as a whole. So obviously, this could be an initiative that could really transform things for STOUT. So hopefully now that we have a better understanding of the problem, we can present to you our solution. So AL is going to cover that. Hey, Alex, you can take over. Thanks, Camilla. Our solution to this problem was to create a series of dashboards within Salesforce that allows for the easy tracking and forecasting of changes in enrollment. To create this, we utilized Einstein Analytics, recently renamed Tableau CRM, which is a very robust business intelligence tool utilized by Salesforce. Specifically, our dashboards allow for the tracking of absolute and FTE equivalent enrollment by program and by college, as well as tracking of percentage changes in enrollment by program and by college. The dashboard also allows you to compare enrollment trends of different programs and colleges to understand these trends relative to similar units. It does this through user customizable charts as well as tables that even flag with user definable metrics when a program has declined or increased by more than a specific amount. In addition, the dashboards are able to forecast future enrollment by program using Einstein Analytics time series forecasting tools. Next slide, please. We think this solution provides a simple to use and easy to understand way for program directors, department chairs, and other users to track and forecast enrollment trends over time. In addition, the automatic flagging of programs using conditional formatting allows for the early detection of program enrollment issues, enabling users to better prioritize problems as they arise. Ultimately, having on-demand access to this data will enable users to make more informed decisions as to which programs they need to allocate resources to because of either declining enrollment or unanticipated increases in enrollment. By having a dashboard that can find these issues much more quickly, Program directors and department chairs can hopefully address issues before the cash flow problems outlined by Camilla earlier come to pass. And now I will turn it over to Matt for the demonstration. Thanks, Al. Uh, this proof of concept uses intentionally fake enrollment data. The numbers reflected here are in no way representative of actual enrollment numbers at UW Stout. So just a disclaimer. The goal of this proof of concept was to create a series of dashboards to show easily digestible data in an easy to find way. The result we came up with is a comprehensive set of dashboards that are interlinked together to create a holistic experience where the user does not have to nav navigate away from the page. The top of each dashboard shows the current enrollment at UW Stout 
as well as navigation buttons to the various reports that we have created. Below that, we have a series of filters that allows a user to make selections on the fly in regards to program, college, and graduate level. For this proof of concept, I have pre-selected two programs, the Digital Marketing Technology Program and the Information and Communication Technology Program. We did have 111 programs loaded into this, so for ease of the proof of concept, um, this just worked better. This first dashboard shows enrollment, semester over semester, and a line graph. The line graph is broken down by year and semester, and it allows the user to quickly see uh, enrollment trends. The next dashboard we have is the full-time equivalency. Due to the way these numbers are calculated, the user is prompted to select undergraduate or graduate prior to seeing data. Within each dashboard, we have specified a table format that shows the program name, again, plan year and plan semester, and the number of students enrolled, as well as a final calculated value for the full-time equivalency. This holds true with the graduate programs as well. Within each of these dashboards, the programs are only available that are associated with graduate or undergraduate, so you won't see any mixed, mixed data coming through. Our next dashboard is the percent change. This is also in a table format, and it shows the program name, year, semester, and enrollment. This, this dashboard uses conditional formatting that a user can update as needed. Uh, for this demo, we do have it set at negative 25% and positive 25% as the flags for program enrollment. In order to update the conditional formatting, uh, we also created a how-to page within this dashboard that shows the steps as well as screenshots on how a user can easily go in and make the changes that they need. This is a important tool because it also shows that even though these are data-driven dashboards, we can create static pages within that show how-tos and help topics as needed. Again, keeping the user in one location. The next dashboard we have is college versus college, and this just shows the various colleges against each other in enrollment numbers um, from 2016 through current day. Um, this is set up just to show the different varieties of charts and graphs we can use to show data. One thing to note is for this one, I did leverage all 111 programs that were provided to us. Finally, we have a time series dashboard. This leverages Einstein analytics and its predictability model. We have it set up over three months, six months and 12 months. And the trend line is shown as a dotted line. The purple line is today's date. So I'll click through this. So here's three months, six months, and 12 months. Uh, the line is showing as a f is showing flat, um, and we have discovered that Einstein Analytics uses a smoothing algorithm on their data to kind of help weed out any any jumpy data. I think that coupled with some rigid data we have um, in terms of semesters, just fall and spring for this proof of concept, is why we see a flat line. Additionally, a nice thing about these dashboards is as a user makes changes through any of these filters, they can save a personalized view of this dashboard and that is associated with their profile. That way, next time they come in, they can easily go and see that view without having to go through and make any updates that they made before. This concludes the demonstration that I have for you, and I'll hand it back to AL to talk through the next steps and the potential future provided uh, Salesforce is leveraged in this way. Thank you, Matt. If UW Stout wants to move forward from the proof of concept, there are a few items that can make these dashboards even more powerful. The proof of concept utilizes data uploaded from an Excel spreadsheet into Salesforce. 
Well, a future system could download data from the UW Stout databases to a spreadsheet for later upload into Salesforce. There are also specific tools that may be able to link Salesforce directly to UW Stout databases. These include Salesforce Connect, as well as specific Einstein Analytics external database connector tools. We recommend these options be explored in order to improve both the efficiency of the data transfer process, as well as the speed in which users can access updated information. In addition, we think the dashboards we created can easily be expanded to show more granular data, including individual course enrollment trends, as well as trends by instructor. This will further improve the ability of users to flag problems as they arise. And with that, thank you very much for listening, and thank you especially to James and the ICT team, and we will now open it up to questions. Uh, so the client always has a question. Um, as a team, do you feel that you have met the expectations of the proof of concept? Absolutely. I don't know, Yael, if you want to take this, but I do think um, we were able to meet uh, the expectations of the client. The proof of concept met every single requirement, and I think we ended up going a little bit above that, too, in terms of including branding and trying to make it look like a finished product, even though it's just a proof of concept. I would agree with that assessment. Thank you very much. Thank you. Are there any other questions? We're here to answer. I'll ask one. Um, uh, this is more for, uh, I guess it could be for anybody, but Matt, um, I may have missed this, but the, the last thing that you showed on the timeline, um, I didn't quite get the concept of what was being shown there. Could you just describe what that actually shows? Because I was trying to read the the X and Y axis and I saw 25K sure. on one side and then the thing. So yeah, if you could just describe that, that would be, thank you. Sure. Yeah, the, uh, the time series is uh, showing a predictive trend based on prior data. So you can actually see kind of where a program's enrollment is heading in the future. Um, for this, we, like I said, we use three months, six months, and 12 months, and that can be customized to kind of give yourself any amount of time you'd like to see. Um, but for this, we felt three, six, and 12 worked the best. Um, I, I, I really wished it would have shown a better trend instead of a flat line, um, but, I, you know, we, we only have what we have at this time, so, but yeah, it's supposed to show a trend or a predicted trend. And can you select each program, like one program and see the trend? And can you see, I think you had all selected, mm -hmm. which is why I was seeing like the 25K. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you I can select <laughs> all of them. You can select two of them. You can select one. Fantastic. Thank you for clearing that up. I see we have a question um, in the comments from Beverly. Are there budgetary considerations for UW Stout related to Einstein Analytics? Yeah, so uh, I can take that. The, the cost for the Einstein Analytics package that we would be looking to use, it, it's either $125 per user per month or $150 per user per month. What we have not, and the reason I say it's either is because it, it is not entirely clear and we haven't called Salesforce to verify whether the specific time series forecasting tool is part of the predictive AI tool. Uh, if it is not, if it is separate, it's only 125, but if you need the entire predictive AI tool, it's $150 per user per month. Great, thank you. Josh, Lind, I think you had your hand raised. Did you have a question? Yeah, yeah, and actually, Sam Peterson it sort sort of asked it already. It it has to do with that um, how the data is displayed over time. Um, I really liked the presentation, and it got it got my wheels turning. So so that was very uh, productive in that in that way. But what I was thinking is, um, you know, in higher education, we we tend to think in um, time elements of semesters, and so um, you know, forecasting out three months, six months, nine months. Uh, doesn't make as much sense as um, projecting out, uh, you know, semester by semester. And kind of a step further than that, uh, this is more of a comment than a question, is um, the 
Um, a lot of times when you do the comparisons and you want to see percent change, at least in, in my role, I'm interested in seeing um, fall compared to fall and then spring compared to spring. Uh, because usually what we have is a, a quite a fall off in spring terms uh, compared to falls. And I think it's because it's pretty traditional for students to enter in fall, but you get people, you know, graduating at the end of fall and then not as many new students coming in as in spring. So you expect that drop off. So the better comparison is often fall to fall. And then just one last comment, um, you know, the the it seemed like you had to pick grad or undergrad kind of to start the, the process for which which way you were going to look at the data and some high level decision makers uh, often like to look at uh, at the whole headcount or the whole FTE uh, and not have to make that decision one one or the other. Uh, so those are just comments, but otherwise I really like the presentation and, and it's great seeing you dig into the into the data like that. Thank you. And, and, and to your point about how the data is displayed, um, it is pretty easily customizable. Um, so you, you can make those little tweaks and, and kind of show the data how you really want to see it um, fairly easily, especially comparing fall to fall instead of fall and spring. Um, and I would also add on the time series forecasting, you can add seasonality trends up to uh, it's either 12 or 24 months but if you wanted to add trends that could probably cover the semester changes uh we think that should be doable again it's it's hard to see just given the data we we were given but we think uh the 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 forecasting tool is robust enough to be able to do that great any other questions Thank you, RKG. That was great. So our next group um, that will be presenting will be CLNR. So we have Roy and Tristan. If you guys want to get ready, the floor is yours. And everybody in preparation for the evaluation as you desire to participate, here is the link in the chat now. Hey, Tristan, are you there? <laughs> uh, good afternoon. We are Cleaner Solutions Consulting Team. I am Tristan Redazel. I, am, we ser I served as a business analyst. Now I serve as a project manager. And I'm Roy Nangoreshi. I was also a business analyst and also served as a technical subject matter expert on this. Um, well, current advisement. Uh, as is everything is currently the stu student program advisement process contains a lot of manual touch points along the way. Depending on the student's program, they may be different wait times for advising little or no self-service guides or directions and the end resulting in slower enrollment and re-enrollment <clears throat> re from students. We are just average students that go to Stout and it's our first sense of being independent. It's a stressful time and how many pieces are uh, how many pieces are moving at a time especially when it comes to enrollment for classes for our first year you are bombarded with several emails informing you to enroll when you get when you do finally get to that time to sit down and enroll everything is manual it becomes hard to sign up for classes when one piece of the system isn't working or you just don't understand how the system works we are trying to do everything ourselves and we just need that extra nudge in the right direction. A single email containing a solution that tells the student the order to take classes within their major plan and a few notes on the side to tell you what you should prioritize in each year of schooling. We are here to make a solution that gives you that will give advice to a student that will later meet with a professional advisor supplied by Stout, see if it makes sense for each class or each student taking classes in each scenario. After looking at the current advisement process, this is the problem that we are looking to fix, the inconsistent advising experience. Students stating that they do not receive adequate advising can end up enrolling in the wrong classes, which adds to the wrong educa 
which adds to the educational costs and may delay graduation. Uh, confusing, frustrating, or provided the incorrect information from advisors resulting in a transfer from the, un from the university for feeling insignificant. Retention rates decrease, switch of majors, incurring more debt for the student, um, fix fixing complex student enrollment problem with automated response. Uh, and then going to the advisement staff, creating a more impactful meeting between the advisor goal. Uneven workloads across the academic year, short periods of time when increased staff is needed, but impractical to hire them all at the same time. Different levels of knowledge between each and every advisor. We want to make it a, a thin layer between their knowledge. And then moving on to the centralized enrollment. Like there, there are many, uh, there are many ways to enroll currently, and we want to make it one defined way to enroll online. And as well, moving on to just a meeting with advisors to get to that point. UW style is held responsible for this at the end of the day. Taking these steps now will allow this snowball that is in motion to slow down and feasibly be stopped. The new advising process will state that with an expert system providing sound advice to students and advisors, this, may, this would make the program advisement meetings more efficient and productive because time normally spent on renew, reviewing courses and re, verifying prerequisites can instead be spent on tailoring a student's career plans and the best courses to meet those individual goals. With me saying that, I would like to shift this over to Roy, and talk about the challenge that we have faced and the prototype and how it will work within Salesforce. Um, thank you, Tristan. My name is Roy Nangoresi. As I mentioned earlier, I'm the technical subject matter expert on the consulting group. Uh, I'm going to go through uh, some of the project challenges we faced. Uh, First one being we had a compressed solution development cycle. We had a short time to build this proof of concept and that created limitations that we had to get over. Uh, secondly, it was just uh, transferring data from Excel to Salesforce uh, because there were limitations on how many records we could import. And that had to force us to go back and focus on like uh, what data do we need and what's necessary in building this proof of concept. And as we say, this uh, proof of concept, uh, we, we felt like we were tasked with a challenging one and it was a complex problem to build logic around. Uh, so some of the project technical considerations we had uh, with a longer uh, development cycle time, we wanted to build a process builder that really touch point from the first time the student walks in at Stout, we make sure that uh, they're enrolled in a major or then declared, so we have a process for that. But for this proof of concept, we focused on building, a, we use the flow builder to use that. And like I said, in a full implementation, the flow, flows are used in the process builder as well. So those help part of the process. And like I said, in the full implementation, we would use a process builder, but we focused on using the flow builder here. Uh, another technical consideration, uh, Salesforce actually has a education cloud uh, called uh, Education Data Architecture, also uh, more known as the EDA. And this uh, usually just is focused on high institution learning uh, for uh, universities, where they just focus on making sure the students getting all they need in the higher education. And this was actually a consideration that we wanted to use, but due to the fact that uh, you get a trial period. Our trial period would have ended uh, two weeks prior to this presentation. Uh, so we decided to build our proof of concept just using the Salesforce developer edition that was provided to us because the, all those tools plus more are provided in the EDA. Uh, so just the overview of our proposed uh, proof of concept, it just uh, centralizes where the students able to see all the classes that they've taken and all the classes that they are required and the proof of concept where the student just enters their id and they're able to see a list of all the courses that they need to take and it tells the uh tells the student that uh you've completed these courses so these are the next four 
two, three, five courses that you have left to complete. And also we provided additional advice uh, upon uh, progress each year when the student, a freshman, a sophomore or whatever. And our proof of concept is supposed to create a meaningful interaction between advisors and students when it's advisement time. And with that being said, I'm going to uh, demonstrate our proof of concept. Oh. Uh, just going through quickly, this was the flow that we built where it's able to go through and grab student records and enrollments and assign them to someone. And it goes through again, grabs the student degree plans, finds the completed courses and required courses displays them and then sends an email to the student. So in our proof of concept, we assume uh, this, like we, as other groups mentioned, we built this from a system administrator's point of view, and this is what the administrator will be able to view, but when the student are uh, in a full implementation, the student will be able to come in and see the information here. The student's able to see all their personal data down here, and up here, like we said, we wanted to add guidance paths for students. As you can see, this student's a junior right now, but as you, if we go back to their freshman year, they can. Uh, we had some suggestions of what they need to do uh, to help them uh, stay on path uh, to succeed. As you can see, some suggestions we had was, hey, just declare your major, join a student club talk to advisors and then sophomore year we added more to that. Uh, well, we go back and make sure, well, if you didn't apply your major, are you still undeclared? We need you to declare your major sooner so you can have a uh, better experience in higher education and tell them to focus on building their resume and also look for co-ops and internships and possible student leadership positions and student orgs. You can see it's about the same for junior year, 10 co-op career conference, make sure you're on path, uh, leadership positions, and senior is a little bit different. Just talk to your advisor and sign up for graduation. Uh, make sure your resume is built, career conferences, and get connected with the alumni association. So with that being said, I'm gonna go through and show you for that uh, student advisement report. We wanted to make it a very centralized uh, kind of way where the students doing, it's not manual that they have to go and write down like, okay, I've completed this course, now I need to take this course. We made it easy where the student just comes, grabs their student ID, enters it in here, pastes it and clicks next and it's able to go through. And uh, this was the uh, the flaw I showed you. That's what's going on in the background. It's able to go through and say you've completed this courses in numerical order, as you can see. And then these are your required courses. Now, and now when the student clicks next, they're able to, the, the next, it doesn't show it here. It actually sends that list to their email. And then it's able to tell them you've uh, completed the student advisor and their next plan will be to meet with an advisor. And if you don't have a major, you're able to come click here. If you don't have anybody assigned and it takes you to meet the advisors, if you don't have one, talk to the director and they're able to point you to the right one. And with that being said, uh, this is just a proof of concept, but with full implementation, like we said, we will recommend that the UW system use the uh, education cloud because it provides this as standard objects rather than having to make them custom objects and there's more usability and we we could have uh, built more to this uh, proof of concept, but you know we admit as a consulting group we should have focused in earlier and that's on us. Uh, we could have met the client's expectations uh, higher and higher standard, but uh, we own up to it. And with that being said, I would like to open up the floor for any questions you guys have. So I've got a question. Uh, in your flow, did you actually generate an email or is that something that you are planning to try and get around to 
uh, if you had more time. Um, we did generate an email, but with uh, the email coming from Salesforce, it kind of ignored the HTML rules and it showed up uh, the it showed the the list of classes as like a HTML, like a code language. And obviously, like I said, with full implementation there, there are tools on uh, the app exchange that can help out with that where the email comes out uh, readable for the users. So yeah. Uh, would it be possible for you to just pop up uh, that email quickly just so we could see what that looked like? Uh, yes, sir. Give me a second. So these are the emails that we're getting. As you can see, it's showing the paragraph tag for HTML and line breaks, and it even tells me the font size and everything. And that's just the basic e uh, classic email template that you get from Salesforce uh, when you generate a list of classes. And like we said, with more uh, there are tools on the app exchange that can uh, help fix this problem where the emails come out looking cleaner and in a list and they're more readable for the user. Yeah, I, uh, I'm just really glad that you got to that point uh, with actually having an email generated. Uh, the formatting stuff can be tweaked. Uh, mm -hmm. You don't necessarily need to have other tools to do that, but uh, I'm glad that your flow actually fired off an email because that was one of the critical things uh, for the proof of concept. So I'm very glad that that worked out. Thank you. Thank you. I do see we have just a comment for you guys that says that um, she's very much uh, from Samantha Peterson that very much in favor of using more GIFs uh, within the Salesforce interface makes it lively. So I do appreciate that. <laughs> The small touch, but it made me lively. <laughs> I think uh, Evan had asked or had mentioned somewhere like what the the copyright rules for for the fairy fairy godparents. <laughs> I have a question for you as well. So similar to a question that was asked to a previous group, it looks like the students would need to log into Salesforce to do this. Um, utilize your your prototype so was that part of the conversation or the factors with um with your client um well we, uh, as we were building i would say i was building it more from a system administrator's point of view but looking at the fact that salesforce does have an education cloud we're going to assume that the uh, if UW style does go forward and implement Salesforce as a solution for uh, the advisement issue, uh, the student would be able to log in and have their own view where it's just read only maybe. And obviously that was not really discussed, but we wanted we uh, our whole present our whole proof of concept was centered around how how can we make advisement uh, easier for the a student, uh, not, you know. Sorry. Do you do you know if the education cloud um, is there additional costs for each license that that is needed for for students? I, I I'm asking because I know Salesforce is very much user license based. You know, they they give you with the package they give you a certain number, but when we're talking about you know close to 10,000 students plus all of our instructors, administrators, all of that stuff um, with the education cloud, I would I would assume, but I don't know this, um, that they would be still have the same licensing requirements. Do you know if you looked into that? I'm going to just jump in quickly. Uh, at the very start of the semester, uh, one of the assumptions I let the project teams know is that they could assume that the university chose an enterprise license so that all users would have access to that. Um, and once you get to a certain, you know, tipping point, I think it's for Stout, it would be a, around 250 uh, licenses that it's cheaper to go enterprise, at least the last time that I looked at the numbers. 
Um, yeah. That's similar to what my answer would have been, but I also did not have enough information on um, whether it's just user license, but I was going to assume since I see like for Adobe and Microsoft, we get the enterprise edition. So I would assume Star would go that route as well. Thank you. Thank you. All right, if there is uh, no other questions for Cleaner, then we will uh, keep on rolling. Thank you for that uh, presentation, Cleaner. Great job. Uh, next you. up, we'll have our last group, uh, consulting group, BAME Solutions. So uh, without further ado, the floor is yours. BAME, just one second here. Um, for those people that are going to, again, participate with the assessment, you will find the specific assessment for BAME in the yeah. chat now. All right. Hi, everyone. We are BAME Solutions, and our project this semester has been course evaluations. To quickly introduce ourselves, my name is Bria Bauer, and I'm the project manager. I'm Connor York, and I'm the business analyst. I'm Justin McCowitz, and I'm one of the technical SMEs. And I'm Matt Eads. I'm the other technical SME. The University of Wisconsin Stout currently faces a couple of issues with their course evaluation system. Ideally, course evaluations are supposed to be tools that gauge student satisfaction and course effectiveness. This is done through the use of surveys that allow students to give feedback about courses they have taken and instructors they've had. But one issue regarding Stout's current course evaluation system is that it's ineffective in providing this ideal picture. This problem really extends from an inability to centrally collect information in a uniform and fair manner. And currently, the system lacks overall accuracy and consistency in the ways course evaluations are created, distributed, and analyzed. Next slide, please. Because of this issue, it's difficult for budget administrators to make data-informed decisions, and it also becomes a problem when trying to provide accurate historical data on how majors, classes, instructors, and students are performing. Plus, keep in mind, it's now more important than ever to gauge performance because of the way the pandemic has shifted the way students are learning and instructors are teaching. But there's a bigger issue at hand here, so Connor is going to explain now how UW-Stout's course evaluation system could potentially allow for what could be a preemptive measure to improve student retention. All right, so taking a look at the bigger picture problem here, um, student retention depends on student feedback being heard, which brings up the question of how students are being heard currently. And we found that right now students are being heard a little too late. So this means that we need to try and capture student responses before they drop out, not after. And student voices and feedback need to be heard since they're the customer. And when a customer is not satisfied, and we don't listen, they may be less likely to come back, and Stout could be losing students to competing schools. Next slide. All right, so why students drop out? So the biggest reasons would be financial reasons, a lack of support, uh, being unprepared, and stress. And I think that we can figure a lot of that out before they drop out in, rather than after. So next slide. Uh, Moving on to student experiences, uh, Bria left the University of Wisconsin Eau Claire after two years of not being heard or listened to by instructors or advisors, and then transferred to UW Stout in hopes of a better experience. Uh, and then me personally, I considered dropping out of UW Stout four different times throughout the four years due to a lack of communication, poor planning, and lack of easily available resources. And now Matt is gonna talk to you about the process map. Thanks, Connor. So the current state for the survey and the student feedback gathering process at Stout kicks off with a survey created by departments and instructors in Qualtrics, and then a link is sent to individual students through their student emails. 
the student may then fill out the survey and then the survey results are collected and analyzed at the department level. Well, based on our analysis, the best possible future state for this process would be to create the survey with one centralized single authority. And then the survey would then be created in Salesforce, which is now we know the university's customer relationship management software. So a link would be generated and that would then be posted to an announcement in Canvas. This would ensure the widest possible distribution and it also establishes legitimacy for the link. Um, after the survey is taken by the student, the data can then be pulled out of Salesforce and then into Tableau, which is a data analysis software tool that's owned by Salesforce. Once the data is analyzed, we can also ensure accuracy by just going back and verifying it with random sampling. And then when we're comfortable with the data, we can use Tableau to create some really nice graphic presentations that can then be distributed to the departments for use. Justin's going to get into a lot more detail on our proposed solution, so take it away. Justin. Thanks, Matt. So I'm going to go a bit more in depth with our solution. Um, our solution is made up of three different parts. The first is to create a centralized survey in Salesforce using the free tools that Salesforce offers. The next part would be to distribute that survey uh, or those surveys via Canvas. We chose Canvas to deliver the surveys uh, over the traditional email method because students have become more skeptical uh, of clicking on links that they are afraid might be considered phishing. Sending out the survey via Canvas eliminates that fear and will likely result in more students taking the survey. Finally, after students have taken the survey, results can be analyzed via Salesforce with their built-in tool tools or with an external data analysis tool like Tableau, which is owned by Salesforce. This allows the university to better use the survey data to improve student retention. Next slide, please. So here's a bit more information about our solution. Um, it's a centralized, standardized set of three surveys. Uh, they will be distributed throughout the semester to better understand how students are doing throughout the entire semester instead of just at the end. The first survey would be distributed shortly after the beginning of the semester. Uh, this is so we can catch students early on in the semester if they're having any issues. Our next survey would be distributed around advisement day. We chose this date because it's around the halfway point in the semester. And if students were having problems or considering dropping out, um, they would probably know by this point. Our last survey is similar to what Stout currently does. It's just an end of course survey that would be distributed at the end of the semester. Uh, this is to gain insight on how courses could be improved for future semesters. These surveys would all have 10 questions with one essay question. They would all be built around uh, or on a Likert scale, which is basically a scale from strongly agreed to strongly disagree. And engaging students at these intervals provides an opportunity for targeted intervention. Now on to Matt with our demonstration. All right. So during the process model, I talked about posting a link to Canvas. So we're going to start with Canvas. Right now, every student is familiar with Canvas. So posting an announcement with a link to our survey ensures it's going to have maximum exposure. So I'm going to use my test course here. Open up Canvas, open up my announcements. And then we can see the beginning and the end of course surveys that we've created. Um, I'm going to focus on the end of course survey for the demo. And I'll open that up. Obviously, the link here can be different. We just included this one for expediency. But after I hit the link, it takes us to Salesforce and our end of course survey. The questions and layouts obviously can be modified for the production environment. And what's important is we can also integrate this with Qualtrics. Um, Qualtrics can be used to create surveys in Salesforce and share that information. It's a nice integration because it has the ability to store data for historical analysis. The only problem is it comes at a cost in terms of licensing per user. So we stuck with native tools that Salesforce has to create and distribute surveys. This one was created with one of those easy to use interfaces and then used um, Salesforce's survey tool. And you can see our questions and our Likert score answers. And these strongly disagree. All of these tie to an underlying numerical value of zero to five for data analysis, which we'll see when we get to Tableau. But this is it, one page, 
nine questions and a comment section. So then whenever I click submit, obviously the survey is done. Um, admins can then go into Salesforce and they can easily access the data that Salesforce collected during the survey process. And then it, it can be output to a series of spreadsheets or CSVs containing all that information. Um, using representative mock data, I've already done that. So I'm gonna open up Tableau. We selected Tableau for a data analysis software rather than using Salesforce's native tools because Tableau is better. Um, for the purpose of the demo, I kept this fairly simple uh, by linking the survey responses with the survey questions, which we can see up here. There's a lot more elements of data that are captured and data analysts would, would have no problem pulling out real usable data. But I've also created some graphics that can show what that would look like. This one shows us some of the answers. Like I mentioned, we had that value zero to four for the responses, and this is just totaling those and showing questions that may need to be looked at a little bit closer or some that could be used for further analysis. Then I have this one, which is at our spread of question values. And then it shows the number of responses from low to high, and then we can see how many answered strongly disagree to strongly agree. And then the numbers across the top represent our Likert scale values and how many times they were selected for each question. And then I created another one. Um, and then this sheet shows us the average score given to each question. Um, again, there's a lot more data. That can be pulled from this. But short and sweet, this is an example of software that the university currently has that can easily be modified to turn surveys into a really powerful feedback and retention tool. And this concludes the demo. So I'm gonna go back to Bria as soon as I figure out how to seamlessly transition. Thank you, Matt. So if student retention really is a priority for the University of Wisconsin Stout, then we highly urge you to take our experiences and solutions seriously. We want to thank you all very much for your time and we'll now be taking any questions you may have. Uh, this is your client. I'm a little bit disappointed that we didn't see the start of the uh, semester survey. Could you pop that up? Is that available? And the reason why is because one of the things that I thought was the best about your project is the ability to have an intervention in a timely fashion. So either at the start of the semester or midpoint, while the student is still enrolled and still has a possibility of passing the class. So you ask, if I will deliver. All right, I appreciate that, Matt. And there we go. This is showing the beginning and, of course survey. And, and as Matt, Justin you, mentioned. Matt, could you control plus so we can see the questions a little bit better? Sure. To zoom in the screen. How are we looking? Much better, thank you. So then, like I said, we we had also advised using three separate surveys. One at the at the beginning, so we can do some early interventions if there were some issues, and we have an idea of how the semester is actually starting out for students. And then one right after the advisement period so we could get some feedback as, as to how that advisement um, process had worked for individuals. And then of course the ubiquitous end of course survey, but the the real cornerstones of our solution were these um, beginning of course and after the advisement surveys because they're extremely important because what we what we really identified primarily is that is that Stout doesn't really have a technology problem when it comes to solving this issue. It's more it's more of a policy problem. So we feel that if we could somehow integrate these surveys, it gives a, a better opportunity to provide those interventions. Thank you very much. And one of the things that I talked with the team about is that from my perspective as a data person, if you have a survey, it should be consistent across all courses and across all students because it's hard to otherwise fairly uh, compare uh, data from section to instructor to course 
uh, to major, et cetera. So thank you. And I don't know if one of you guys wanted to grab this one too, but we had a, we had a question come in on the call line asking about how, why we thought recommendations should, should be centralized. And one of the reasons that we found is that when we were discussing it, what we noticed is there's, there's a lot of difference in the end of course surveys that we would take. Um, and we thought that in order to gain real valuable intelligence, um, having similar questions and then being and having that pool all the way across all the courses would give us a better yardstick to measure from. Um, one of my esteemed colleagues is more than willing, I'm sure, to jump in and expand on that. Yeah, so as a student, I think it's very important to have our voices being heard. And just because of the way that course evaluations can be differently created, distributed, and analyzed, I feel like having a centralized way to do all of this will ensure that it actually does, in fact, get done. Because right now, I don't know how much of it is actually heard or seen or actually acted on. So having this centralized point would help better ensure that. Hi guys, this is Cami. Hi. Um, hi. So being on the instructor side of this, um, I do like this because um, I've even put this comment in your survey about, you know, I try to reach out to my students via email, just midpoint, you know, at the beginning, midpoint, and at the end. And I don't hear back from everybody. And that isn't more, it's not really a touch point of, um, hey, how you doing for the course? I just want to know how they're doing overall. Like, are you doing all right? So I can see how beneficial this is of knowing where they're at um, and getting to that. However, on the flip side of that, as an instructor, I really do value the, because um, if, I'm, if I'm looking at this correctly, this is more at a student level. You're not really honing in on how are you doing in this class? How are you doing in this class? How are you doing in this class? Is that a correct statement? It is for the purpose of of the presentation, but okay. further further implementations of the survey system once they're pulled into Salesforce. Salesforce is really neat in the fact that it has the capability to integrate with so many other software platforms that the university currently has. Um, what we were what we were not able to do with this was pull in some of that demographic data. Um, it, we believe the university uses PeopleSoft for. Um, for records this salesforce has the ability to interact with peoplesoft so it would it would be able to gather some of that demographic data automatically and then be able to include that so whenever we pull data out into tableau that actually some of those questions can be answered although some of these questions may seem a little ambiguous these were just questions that we pulled out for the purpose of the demonstration obviously in a production environment they're going to be much more thoroughly discussed yep. and vetted um, prior to implementation and, and may may well be able to provide a lot more feedback than what we have on display. Yep. Yeah, my my point was really um, I don't want to as an instructor, I don't want to lose that pointed discussion of I want to know how I'm doing as an instructor. I also want to know if my course is, is needs if there's anything wrong with my course or if there's good things that are good with the course. Um, so being able to integrate that would be amazing. But I do love this concept because this is the stuff that's important for me, at least from from my class's standpoint, is because I can I can kind usually see when things aren't going well. And I would like to have that at the beginning rather than towards the end of the class. So thank you. Yes, ma'am. We we really do believe that having the ability to evaluate feedback. Um, can be an extremely important early intervention tool and could could it really assist with retention? Um, I, I know that it, having the ability myself to have participated in the process, I would have appreciated it. All right, if there are not any more questions, we want to thank you again.
And we're last. Do we just get to leave now? Now it's time and for the final exam. <laughs> right. I was waiting uh -oh. for that paper to drop. <laughs> I would Great stick job. around. Thank you, Ben. Yeah, I would stick around for a few moments. I'm sure Evan has a few words um, that he would like to say. I, I would. Well, um, uh, first of all, consulting groups, I just want to say thank you. Um, we told you at the beginning of this semester, this very unique year that we're living in, that this experience would be pretty, pretty crazy, chaotic. Um, and it may even take you a little bit of time yeah. after the semester ends really to tune into essentially what you experience. Give yourself some time to land, to rest. Um, but just understand this, you've engaged in something um, very complex, but at the same time, very real. Um, so I'm, I'm real proud of all of you. I mean, all of you had various different challenges as you've gone through the semester. And uh, some of you, quite honestly, as I as I hear these presentations tonight, I'm just taken aback. Yeah. It's like I've told our, our project managers, our leadership, by the time you're done with this, it's like you see these people and you're doing this, they, they've done this work and you're thinking, wow, am I that smart that I could have led them to that place? And so it's 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 really impressive. You folks, quite honestly, have just you brought it, and I just want to say thank you for that. <laughs> <Can't> I? <laughs> I gotta stop watching the chat. <laughs> these kind of these kind of experiences would not happen unless we had support. Um, so I just want to give a few thanks for the people that were in here uh, that provided uh, the kind of commitments to make this a really rigorous but valuable experience. James as our client, I just want to say thank you again, James. You as a client are challenging, and every group and member in these know that. So thank you for doing that. Uh, Bob McLean. Bob McLean is an individual who is an alumnus of UW Stout. And Bob has been, Bob, I think it's been about five years. At least we keep saying that every time we talk. I know. I know. Yeah. But I just, if you wanted to say a few words, Bob, I, I think that would be that'd be great. It was uh, a pleasure being part of this uh, this past semester. Um, this is uh, probably one of the best uh, overall groups uh, of presentations and solutions that I've witnessed. It just keeps getting better and better every time we do this. So, I mean, that's hats off to to Evan and James and Cami and everybody involved, all the program managers. You guys did an awesome job. So, um, congratulations to those that are graduating. Um, I was a December grad myself. It's been four, four and a half years at Stout. It was a great time and uh, congratulations and and uh, best of luck in your future endeavors. And thank you, Bob. Uh, continuing down the list of people that made this happen, uh, Beverly Tyree from one of our good industry partners, Cypher Consulting. Uh, Beverly, would you have a few words you'd like to say here as well? Sure. Um, this was my first time uh, participating in this, and I want to say how inspiring this really is. It's wonderful to see all of the groups and see what you, how much work you've done, as well as how much learning and the great presentations. I've also learned so much from you as well, and um, also from the team that is supporting you. So thank you and congratulations. Job well done. Thanks for not blocking us, Beverly. Never. <laughs> All right, thanks, Beverly. Um, now to the executive team. We represented ourselves, uh, Cami Peterson and myself, as the executive team of a consulting organization. I've called it Stout Solutions Consulting. That was actually the original name that we had as we started this experience five to seven years ago when, whenever we started this. But Cami, why don't you go ahead and say a few words? Oh, I'll just say I am I I'm a proud I I don't think I can say mama bear, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, proud mama bear. This has been um, extremely an extreme experience. I mean, it's just been really great. I've been fortunate to be a part of this for the last I think four years now, somewhere around there. 
Um, and just, just watching the growth that happens and the concepts that you've learned in ICT 103 and 255 and 355 and 305, all of those classes being really put together into this, um, this type of consulting gig. And Evan, you've really grown in, in this into such an amazing experience. And I was just, when I was watching the solutions tonight, um, the branding that you've done and the passion you showed, uh, I really, really hope that some of these concepts, I mean, they don't seem like they're hard concepts. I hope that we can take some of these forward um, because what you've built here, people need, people need. So excellent job to all of the groups. Thank you, Evan and PMs um, for including me in this and PMs, you rocked this. You really did. I want to give that huge shout out to you. I'm sure Evan's going to do that as well. But even watching your growth through this, I'm going to start tearing up. <laughs> it's just, it's been a really cool solution. So thank you everybody for allowing me to be a part of this. Thank, thank you, Cammie. And <laughs> yeah, there's a certain level of pride in these experiences when everybody that comes out the other side survives and learns. And so... That is true. Speaking about our PMs, one of the things that Cami and I have done pretty consistently with the assistance of our industry partners is we have taken time to learn about what it is to create leaders. Um, back when we started, I remember one of the first people that sponsored us told us a very simple few words that represented the right way to lead. Um, it was instead of saying, have you done your job yet? It was more of a, what can I do? What are the obstacles I, obstacles that I can help remove? And what can I do to help you succeed in the far, as far as resources? And we've continued to have that way of thinking about things. And the PMs in this case, uh, led by senior PM, you're a senior, Andre, senior PM and, and Ashley and, and Noah have continued to do that to where they don't believe it's their job to do the work of these groups, but to uh, literally do that, to remove obstacles and provide resources. And I think I'd like each of you, starting with you, Andre, since this is your swan song, uh, just to say a few words reflecting and uh, maybe whatever else you'd like to say. Uh, thank you, Evan. Um, I guess I'd like to start by saying thank you, Evan, Cammy. I'm incredibly grateful. Um, to be with, to have been with you the past three semesters, starting with taking the course myself and then being along the journey as a program manager um, last semester and this semester. Uh, this semester. So I appreciate that. Um, another thing, I think the groups, the consulting groups, have heard me and seen me say, and may the odds be ever in your favor throughout, yeah. throughout the semester. I said that last semester too. And I think it doesn't just mean I hope you don't fail. It means much more than that. It means I wish and I hope that you have the best chances of winning, not just now, but always. And I think that statement's very true. And I think everyone here won tonight just by getting up and presenting. So everyone deserves to be able to pat themselves on the back. And um, yeah, thanks, Evan. Yeah. Well, I'll go next. Um, I really appreciated the opportunity to work with all of you. I've been Cami, Andre, Beverly, um, you guys have, and all of the consulting groups have made this really enjoyable. I'm graduating in December as well, and um, I'm going to miss all of you. <laughs> I was telling them, and I'm like, I don't know, I might need to look into something else around here to, to keep in touch, because this is been such a tremendous experience and it's such a joy to be able to learn along with all of you. Everything that you guys brought forward in our, our weekly meetings, you guys have challenged us and helped us grow as people and as, as individuals. So thank you. Um, thank you all. <laughs> yeah, I really just thank you to everyone like Evan came providing this opportunity. I'd like to thank Andre for making this really fun and helping me learn along the way being a senior PM because I'll be senior PM next semester so I'm going to try to fill his shoes 
And uh, thank you to all the uh, the consulting groups making this a really fun experience. I feel like I learned probably just as much, if not more, as some of the consulting groups going through this experience. So this has been really fun. I'm really glad that uh, we finally made it to the end of the roller coaster, as Andre always said. So this is great. Great job to all the consulting groups. This is a really great experience, and I'm excited to be the senior PM next semester. All right. Thank, thank you, PMs. I do appreciate you again. Um, I just want to say thank you to the guests that have come in here um, for this today. Certainly, we all know beyond a shadow of a doubt that our organization is undergoing changes. And damn you, Cammy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> these are legitimate solutions to problems we know we have. There's no doubt about that. And thank you. I appreciate you listening. It takes time to listen to these things, and I hope that something improves our lot for the future. And by the way, if you like this video, which we are going to be essentially making available to the general public, um, for reserve to those people that want to see it, please do reach out to me and ask. I'd be happy to give you the uh, link to it uh, that you can share quite honestly with anyone. Um, we'd also be interested if you would like to investigate possible iterations of Salesforce. Salesforce is on campus at UW Stout. And if you'd like to explore specific areas that potentially this tool, which we have, uh, could solve a problem, reach out to me because we can do something with that. Um, it would be a commitment of time, certainly, but uh, you've seen essentially what we've been able to do in a student sense. And quite honestly, I think you know this there's some quality here some some very good quality all right so i think all the thank yous are there so i just want to say again thank you broadly to everybody and it's uh it's time to turn this off so andre you can quit recording unless you did before and if you did i'm going to pay you money so my last uh tears don't